If you are a subscriber to my channel or you're just a regular follower and watcher, you're probably wondering right now what is going on. There are two videos this week from Chino appearing in my feed. What? What's happening? So let me explain. I only really like posting a new video when I feel like I have something valid to contribute to the community. And um, of late, you know, I've noticed there are quite a lot of YouTubers out there at the moment posting videos and posting tutorials on Power Apps. And I've kind of sort of felt uh, less of a drive to do so myself. Um, well, you know, I still have this drive to post to YouTube and post new videos, but really I want to only do it when I find I have something um, of that, you know, that's really sort of important to post and something that I think that people will will really uh, enjoy and um, get a lot out of. Sometimes I don't post videos when that happens because I'm beaten to it by someone else. And when that happens, I really don't feel the that it's necessary for me to do my own take on this. Um, because there's lots of really great, like I said, there's lots of really great YouTubers out there already doing this kind of thing. So why why just add another video um, to the mix that's just going to confuse people on which video is the one to watch or maybe maybe that doesn't necessarily confuse people and maybe just people would like me to post more but um, in the end this is my explanation on to sort of why I don't post a few videos a week. A lot of the time I'm sitting here thinking I'd like to post a video on that but I don't post a video because I notice that there's someone else that's already posted the video on it so I just don't do it. So today I am doing a, uh, a video, two videos in one week and I'm doing that because I have recently done a um, posted a video on doing attachments in Power Apps and um, in that video I sort of uh, demonstrate a, a new method of, uh, of doing attachments and it was something that I sort of stumbled across and put two and two together and there were some other videos out there certainly some other uh, big youtubers uh, power apps youtubers were had done similar videos but uh, to me it didn't feel like they were sort of putting two and every all the little bits all together to simplify it just that little bit further now in that video I sort of go, I, I go, I, sh I sort of demonstrate up to a point of how to, how to do attachments. I show you how to, well I, I, well I do demonstrate on how to do attachments, but then I don't, I stop at the point where I display attachments and say a read only version of the record. So when you open the record back up, you want to be able to see the attachments on that particular record. And I didn't do this because I, at the time I sort of felt, well, I, I think I've gone far enough with what I've shown and I really don't, feel like it's necessary to actually demonstrate any further. You should already have the tools in your bag to be able to display those records based on what, oh, sorry, display those files based on what record you're opening. But I have had that, well, one, that video is actually getting um, a reasonable amount of views, certainly a good amount of views for my channel. And two, I have had a few inquiries on um, people sort of asking on how to display records and sort of how to go a little bit further than what I demonstrated in that video. So today I'm just going to do a quick follow up uh, on how to do that. And I'm going to use our, if you can see, as you can see in front of us here, we've got our Power Apps Demo Issues List application, which I've been using quite a lot lately. And um, if we just run this quickly we'll see that I've got my three records that I've created, my three issues, and I've got this little eye icon. And if I click on that, I can view the details that I saved for that particular issue. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video on how to do attachments the best way, I'll link to it on the screen right now, or just find it in my channel. It's um, it's a couple of videos ago I did that. So it's a really recent video. And um, if you watch that first and then come back to this one, uh, they they will they hopefully sort of will marry up really well. Okay, so that is the view only 
view of our issue, if we just go back out here, first thing we're going to need to display our attachments is our good old gallery, you might have guessed. If we go up here and uh, we select um, in here, insert gallery, we're going to insert a blank gallery here. We won't worry about the data connection just yet. I'm going to shrink this down so it fits nicely just under this label. Okay. Now our gallery is going to connect to our issues attachments document library. So again, refer back to the first video. This is the library in SharePoint that we're saving our attachments to. So when we create a new issue and we attach files, they get saved into this issues attachment. And that issues attachments has a link to each of those issue issues via an issue ID column. So if I just quickly, let's take a quick Look at that. This is what I'm talking about here. Here's this parent ID and this is the issue ID that we've saved and any attachments that are saved against that issue ID. So this is a reference back to our issues list and our unique ID against this each issue. So we can see here we've got issue 16, 17 and 18. If we go to attachments, we've got three attachments that have been saved against issue 16 four against issue 17 and only one against issue 18. Okay, so we've got our gallery here. The first thing we wanna do then is point this to our issues. So we don't wanna show all of the attachments that are in that document library. We only wanna show the files that have been attached to this issue. So the issue that we've clicked on in our gallery, we only wanna show those attachments that belong to that issue. So in here, we want to filter our issues attachment. And of course, where the, the column in that, in that library is called parent ID. And the parent ID, we want it to equal our gallery issues, the selected item that we selected in our gallery, in our issues gallery and the ID, because this is the field that corresponds to the parent ID in our attachments document library. That's our filter. So that's going to take care of what files we're actually loading into that gallery. So all we need to do now is to configure our gallery to display our attachments. And the way I'm going to do that is through the HTML control, because that way we can create a hyperlink to every single one of those documents that appears in this gallery, which will make it just so much easier for the user to be able to click on it and open that file. First off, let's just put a border around this gallery so we can see it properly. Change the border color to just like a, a gray. And then let's select the cell. And in here, I'm gonna drop a HTML control. So in here, we need to create, we need to write a little bit of HTML to display that file. So we, for that, we need to create a hyperlink. We do that with the ahref. And what, what, how we're going to create the string is by concatenating several strings together to combine together to create this hyperlink inside of the gallery. So what we need here is a single quote because where our string is encapsulated with between the two double quotes, but href also requires a parameter. The href HTML requires a parameter and in here, so we need to distinguish between these two strings. So this is the this is the string that Power Apps is expecting, which is around the double quotes and the one that we're going to concatenate together with other strings. And so we use the single quote for any of our HTML parameters or, or to configure our HTML. So if, if href expects a, um, a URL, for example, which is what it will expect here, we, um, we can use the single quote so that that is included in the actual HTML text string that Power Apps ex expects. 
So to concatenate with another string here, we just use the and symbol, the ampersand, and it'll be this item because we're remember we're generating these links inside of this gallery. So each each row of the gallery will be one of the attachments. So for this particular item, and inside of SharePoint, we have a property for each file. In, well, inside of a document library in SharePoint, there's a property that we can return back for each one of these files, and it's just link to item, and that will return back an actual hyperlink to that document. So this item link to item, which is like that's, I mean, that's really handy and really convenient because we don't have to try to rename the file or generate a different file name or keep track of what the file was saved as this link to item property that's on the file will just give us the the full hyperlink to that file or the full path to that file so after that we just want to continue on with our html string and so we need to open our double quotes again and close our single quote here to close off this parameter, which will be the hyperlink here. And then we want a greater than symbol and we'll close the quote again. So this is the second string we're concatenating. So you can see here, we've built up a, a hyperlink string, but we're not quite finished yet. We also want it to actually display something inside of the gallery, like to show us the file name. So not only will this be a link to the file, it'll also display the file name inside of the gallery so the user knows which file they actually want to click on. So this again will just be this item and we want that file name with extension. So this returns back the actual just file name as a string. There's no path or hyperlink or anything in there. It's just the file name, the full file name with the extension as a string, which is what we want here. And then we need the and again, and let's open up. Let's have another double quote here because we need, we need one little part, last part of this HTML string here to complete the hyperlink. And that would just be a less than symbol slash a and greater than symbol and quote. And you can see inside of our gallery, it's, automatically populated now with our files that are attached to this particular issue that are coming from that document library. And these are hyperlinks that have been created through this HTML control. If we run this and we click on that, it just opens the file in whatever the default program is for that file on, that use, on the user's PC. If we click OK, and then we go to another issue and we say click 18. This is now, re, the gallery now re-renders with that filter to show whatever file that we are opening for that particular attachment because it's filtering by the ID of the issue that we clicked on. And that's how simple it is to show file attachments in Power Apps.